Don't go anywhere. Stay with me. I'm not gonna find it. I put it away. I don't have it. Ah, oh, jeez. I can't. Ah. Uh, doing I hope you're doing well I know where you are you're at home you guys have been amazing uh, sending me pictures of all of your bread good job everybody we're all figuring it out together I'm no expert but um, I have a head start on you is what I would say so you were very grateful you asked for a lot of tips I gave you my tips and you're making a lot of bread and you're sending them along and it's great the other thing that you sent along are questions there's a lot of questions. In every stage of this, you can uh, court disaster. And a lot of you have, and that's okay. You wanna see disaster? Hold on. Look at this. I'd made this uh, two days ago. That looks okay until you see the side. What's wrong with that? That's, that's not good. It's like a weird boober. It's not good. It should, that whole thing should be up like that. It's flat, it's a spaceship. We all make mistakes. It happens all the time. That's okay. It's not okay. I'm very mad at myself, but it happens. Okay, so you sent in a bunch of questions and I'm gonna answer them for you and we'll put them up on the channel and we'll keep going. From French Fry Phil. French Fry Phil. Number one, what kind of lame do you have? I have a cheapy one. It's curved. I don't really like it. I noticed that you have possibly straight blade. I also may just may just need a better lame. Uh, this is mine. It looks old timey. I think I showed it in the other video. I like it because it has a handle. And yes, you're right. Look at that. The blade goes in straight. I have another one. Hold on. I have the one you're talking about. It's curved. It's okay too, but I do like the straight one. I'm not endorsing these people, but it says traditional black walnut primal kitchen. That's what I have. I'm not telling you to go buy it, but that's what I have. Second one from French Fry. How long do you proof in the fridge? And how do you cover the dough in the fridge? Just a tea towel? I put it in from whenever I am done, which is usually in the afternoon. I throw it in the refrigerator and it proofs there until the next morning, usually around eight, sometimes 10, sometimes 12. I just leave it in there. I cover it with just a tea towel. A good trick I saw John Favreau uh, in his video, shower caps, perfect shower caps. Go right over your little basket and throw it in. Great, great one. But I only have my wife's shower caps, so I'm not gonna use it. They've been used. And last one from French Fry. My wife would like to know if you have any favorite discard recipes. We have this quote unquote, we're wasting guilt happening could be a sourdough rookie thing i understand what you mean you feed it you feed it and it gets big and then you use only a portion of it and then you have some left yeah i would say uh two things to you pancakes and waffles get on it okay from alan just a simple clifton guy that's where my family's from clifton new jersey trying to get baked what kind of starter yeast would you recommend for sourdough I've ordered a bunch of stuff to get started, probably overthinking, getting confused with starter, the yeast. Uh, several people asked about tips for maintaining a great starter. Okay, so you don't need to buy yeast because you're capturing yeast in your starter. Remember we showed you how to get that going with your flour and your water and you get it into your little thingy, me bob, and this is ready to go. Mmm, this one's really, this, I'm gonna bake with this as soon as this thing is over. So you don't need to add any yeast to it. To maintain a good starter, you put it in the refrigerator in a mason jar and keep it in there and then you only have to feed it like once a week. If it's out, you have to feed it usually twice a day if you're active and want to bake bread. You can let it go like a day and a half. It's gonna start getting funky. It will come back. But this is one big thing from all of your comments online. Stop suffocating your starter. Stop making too much of it. Stop being too needy. You're being a little aggressive with your starters. Think light, think airy. Think taking a bulk of it out and just feeding it a little bit and keeping it up that way. Don't, it doesn't have to be this big mongo thing where you're putting pounds of... 
Uh, think light and airy. You just want a little tablespoon. That's all you need left when you want to feed this and you get all rid of all the other stuff. Just a little tablespoon and that's enough. There's enough yeast in that. So don't think... I know you panic and you're like, I put more and more and I gotta <laughs> feed it. And what's going on? Now? And, uh, breathe. Good question there, um, Alan. From Katie. I've been feeding my starter with 50-50 whole wheat and unbleached flour for about a week. I get bubbles, but not rise. I've been saving 75 grams starter, 100 grams flour mix, and 100 grams water at about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Any suggestion? I don't know what you mean, Katie. <laughs> I'm a little confused. You mean you're not getting rise when you're putting it into the dough? I'm sorry, Katie. Uh, can you rephrase that? <laughs> I don't want, I could answer this a whole bunch of different ways. I could, and it's gonna, what's the point? From Joey, is bread starter different across the world? I'm on Kauai, out here in the middle of the Pacific. Does the region change the bread starter? Yes, it does. I think there's only a certain uh, number of types of yeast, but they say that's why San Francisco is distinct from other sourdoughs because of the yeast that's in that atmosphere in that part of the world. There are people that dispute that, but it makes perfect sense to me. My mother's trying to get a starter going in upstate New York in a townhouse and it's not working. I don't think there's any yeast where she lives. And Kauai, by the way, I would love to be in Kauai. From Robert, I followed your sourdough starter video and it kept fermenting. All purpose flour and water, equal parts, large amounts of hooch on the top of the starter every morning. Um, okay, so you, that it means that it's really active, it's happening, that means you're not feeding it enough. Uh, feed it, get the hooch off. That means it's really gotten to the point where it's eaten all of the fuel that you've given it. So feed it just a little less and put it in the fridge and calm it down and then bring it out again. So that's what all the hooch means is that it's now eating itself turning into uh, alcohol. From Kate, I'll soon be, soon be receiving sourdough starter from a lady on Etsy. She emailed very detailed instructions on what to do with the starter when it arrives. I'm starting to think I've inadvertently, inadvertently adopted a pet. Will it be worth it? Yes, it is like having a pet and it will be worth it. And it's actually better than a pet because if you kill this one, uh, you won't feel bad. Tony, big fan here from your neck of the woods, Rockland County, New York. I turned my wife onto your sourdough YouTube channel because she's always wanted to try and make sourdough bread. The quarantine has given her time to dig in. She watched your YouTube videos. A couple questions she wanted me to ask. I write good emails. Do I stir in the liquid that settles on top before each feed? Yeah, that's what I do. Uh, if there's too much, I pour a little of it off but there's nothing wrong with it. I actually just have an instinct that combining it on itself is actually healthy and you're creating a, a stronger colony. Do I need to discard half the volume each time I feed or is that simply to prevent the starter from getting too big by the end of the feeding cycle? That's a question that I've asked myself and when I'm not baking and I have it in a mason jar, uh, I don't discard all of it I'll just add like a little tablespoon and a little water just to keep it fed, just a little active. But when I'm doing this, like with the big stuff, uh, yeah, I would cut um, even more than 50%. So it's just a matter of keeping it healthy. Again, light and airy. Whatever you think, whatever your instinct is telling you how much to dump. It is also depends what you're doing. Are you baking? Are you currently trying to get a bunch of it so you can make four breads for your friends and family? Or are you just feeding it to keep it alive and keep it in the refrigerator nice and happy? It depends what you're doing. Thank you for that, Tony. I'll see you uh, back in Rockland County. From Andy, is it possible to make it without using a digital scale? How would people make it hundreds of years ago, years ago before the digital scale? Good question. <laughs> Maybe they had old timey scales with um, you know, the things and maybe they did it that way. They probably just did it by cup. They probably did it by feel. They probably did it by eye. It does help. It does help. It's not necessary. Whatever you got to do, Andy. You can use a cup and a cup. That's fine. JC, 
Huge fan. I've been following your sourdough recipes and want to move into the bagel game. Can you send me your recipe? Ho, 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 ho. Uh, yeah, we're, that's, that'll be the next video. Here is what's coming. Olive bread, bagels, pretzels. Those are the three videos that are coming up. If only I had time where I could be in my house for a long period where I, I could make these videos. If only something would happen that would keep me home for a while. But those are the ones that are coming. And yes, I will post it, send it, all the rest. From Nick Go Yankees. Huge fan. Oh no, that was JC. <laughs> Nick is just asking, I know this is a touchy subject with bakers, but I'm having a problem getting it up. Also, the dough seems super sticky rather than being wonderfully plump and smooth. Any advice is greatly appreciated. Nick, uh, less water. Less water. This, it's really sticky and hard to manage because it's so hydrated. You have more water than you can handle. You'll get practiced and it won't be that big of a deal. Um, but in the beginning, I find, and when you want less hassle, I find, decrease the amount of water. It makes it a little more firm, a little easier to handle. You'll be able to practice with it, get better at shaping and all the rest of the stages. Uh, yes, yes, less water. Last one from Jeremy. Hey Tom, I'm a big fan of yours. I like including that part. I could have edited that out, but I think it's nice that we keep it in. I tried to bake sourdough last week and it turned out like a hockey puck. One thing I noticed is my dough was very loose when I was shaping it. Again, a lot of water. I just chalked it up to more hydrated dough than I was used to. Very good, Jeremy. You, you, you know before I even answered. After the second proof, my dough didn't come up. It was pretty flat. After the second proof, right. Uh, I made sourdough again this week and I had the same result. No dooming, no doming on the final proof. Just wondering if you have any insight. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay, uh, Jeremy, I would say that your not using your starter at the right time. You have to make sure that it is, remember we talked about the float test? You take a little piece of this, you put it in a thing of water, and if it floats, that means, again, light and airy, it's very active and ready to go. Before it gets to that point, it won't be good. After it gets to that point, it won't be good. You could get away with it, like you're getting away with it, but you're making bread that you're not completely satisfied with. So keep an eye on this. Make sure that you really, really pay attention because this is your only yeast that you're using. Uh, so make sure that it is super active and that will give you the advantage. The other thing it could be is in the shaping. If you beat it up, be gentle with it when you're shaping. If you beat it up and break down that whole structure, that will cause it to be flat also. Um, but I suspect my instinct is that uh, that's what happened to this one, by the way. This lame ass bread that I made. Um, this was not using the starter at the right time. And then that's what you get. Time. Whenever you fail, nine times out of 10, my friends, when you fail, it's because you rushed. At some point, when you were feeding it, when you were shaping it, when you were putting it in, it's whenever you become impatient. And you can become impatient at the last minute and that'll kill your bread. That's all. Uh, very good job. Very good job by everybody. You're making amazing breads. Keep them coming. Keep posting them and sending them to me so I can add them to my story. I'll keep putting them up. Keep the dialogue coming. Really, really fun. And I sincerely, 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 sincerely hope that you're doing okay. I know these are weird, stressful moments for us, but I think uh, this will pass. Know that it will pass. And we're doing something good and learning how to bake. My big question is, when it's all over, how many of you will continue making bread this way, this long pain in the ass way. I hope a lot, but I think once the supermarkets are open and you don't have a face mask on, I bet there's gonna be a lot of people out there that don't uh, ever bake bread again. <laughs> but uh, we will, I will, you will. Thanks for the questions, keep them coming. I'll post again so you can, uh, you can send some more. And that's it, enjoy. Mm -hmm.